PhD student from the University of Florence. I'm attending my second year of my PhD, so I am halfway through my journey. Uh, today, I will introduce you a research work entitled Kytosan Coated Niosome for Nose to Brain Delivery of Clonazepam, uh, developed in collaboration with the University of Santiago de Compostela. But first of all, let me show you a brief introduction about nasal administration. Uh, most of the drugs, in particular hydrophilic molecules and high molecular weight compounds, are not absorbed by the brain due to the presence of the blood brain barrier. Uh, in the last year, nose to brain delivery is emerging as a strategy to overcome this barrier and deliver the drug directly into the brain. Uh, the, the existence of a direct connection between the olfactory region of the nasal cavity and the cerebral spinal fluid was used to investigate the opportunities for exploiting the nasal mucosa for the delivery of drugs to the brain. Uh, nasal administration is characterized by attractive features such as non-invasive, painless, improved patient compliance, and the possibility of self-medication. Uh, moreover, intranasal drug, intranasal route, allows the administration of drugs avoiding the typical gastrointestinal degradation. But because of the rapid mucociliary clearance in the nasal cavity, bioadhesive formulations are needed for an effective targeting. In general, nasal drug delivery is mainly developed to improve drug absorption and bioavailability by prolonging its residence time on the nasal mucosa through biodegradable and mucoadhesive formulations. Pharmaceutical nanotechnologies appear as an ideal formulation strategy for the nose to brain delivery. In this context, the aim of the present study was the development of kytosan coated niosomes as clonazepam carrier and the investigation of the effect of kytosan coating on their performance in terms of nanoparticles characteristics, mucodesive properties, stability, permeability, and biocompatibility. Our kytosome suspension is composed of span 60, cholesterol, and solulan C24 as nanoparticles' main components. Then NPG was used as selective brain targeting. In fact, specific ligands can be inserted to be recognized by transporters expressed on the blood-brain barrier. And palmitoyl glucosamine already proved to enhance the concentration in the brain, probably by interaction with the glucose transporter. Clonazepam is the drug studied in this research work, and kytosan at low molecular weight has been used to coat nanoparticles. Clonazepam is a potent and long-acting benzodiazepine derivative. Due to the longer duration of action, is the first choice in the treatment of sexual and panic disorders. But its low aqueous solubility and other pharmacological issues make the development of innovative delivery systems particularly desirable. So kytosan is a polysaccharide derived from the acetylation of chitin, was also employed for its ability to reversibly open tight junctions with the potential to increase the drug permission across the nasal mucosa and extracellular transport along the olfactory and trigeminal nerves. Kytosomes were prepared by three different methods thin layer evaporation, evaporation, and solvent displacement technique. Briefly, TLE method, the lipidic phase was dissolved in chloroform and completely removed by rotary evaporation under vacuum to form a thin layer. Then the layer was hydrated with the hydrophilic phase under steering by a paddle, heating at 65 degrees. They obtained some suspension where centrifuged and the supernatan was collected, and 10 milliliters were subjected to sonication in an ice bath with an ultrasound homogenizer at 50% of power for five minutes for two cycles. Then a solution of kytosan in acetic acid 1% was filtered and drained on niosome suspensions. Niosomes and kytosomes were analyzed by dynamic light scattering in terms of sites, PDI and Z potential. 
the evaporation method has got almost the same steps of the first one, but with some differences in the condition, as you can see in the images. The main change is the step after the solvent evaporation. There are four cycles, which one composed of two minutes of stirring by vortex and two minutes of heating at 65 degrees. The method solvent displacement technique starts with the dissolution of the lipidic phase in chloroform. This one was drained on the chitosan solution under stirring. The following passages are the same of the previous one. The main difference is that with this method, we obtain directly chitosomes, not nisomes first. So we use evaporation method to investigate which chitosan concentration was the best one to obtain nanoparticles with suitable for our purpose. We choose two milligram milliliters chitosan solution because the results are the best for this method. In fact, the zeta potential is the highest and PDI and sites are suitable. Then we investigate how the method affects nanoparticles characteristics. As we can see, particle size is good for the method, as well as PDI, but zeta potential is higher with evaporation method. So for further experiments, we choose this preparation. Indeed, an higher charge leads to a more stable formulation. We also tried to use chitosan salt that are more soluble, but the results are not good. In fact, nanoparticles are too big on the aim of this project. Moreover, we try to use a catalan solution at pH 5.5 instead of 4.5. The results are not satisfying because the charge is lower and the formulation is not stable. Uh, once selected the evaporation method, physical stability of chitosan coated nanoparticles was monitored during 12 weeks at 4 degrees. On the left, we can see that this site is stable during all the tested period. And on the right, we can observe the short-term stability. We suspended our formulation in simulated nasal fluid or in phosphate buffer at pH 7.4 at 37 degrees. And we analyzed the sites to simulate the in vivo situation. It is quite clear that the site stability is better in simulated nasal fluid. In fact, nanoparticles diameter is not changed after 24 hours. In contrast, in phosphate buffer at 37 degree, sites significantly increase. Then loaded chitosomes were prepared by evaporation method. Clonazepam was added in the lipophilic phase and nanoparticles were characterized. The drug doesn't affect nanoparticles dimensions as well as PDI and the charge. Drug entrapment was determined by the dialysis bed method and has been calculated as entrapment efficiency. An aliquot of chitosome suspension was withdrawn and diluted with 10% solution of Triton X to destroy nanoparticles and analyzed by HPLC. Entrapment efficiency has been calculated as the ratio between concentration of entrapped drug and total drug concentration, and we obtain a 60%. In order to evidence if our formulation has got lipodesive properties, we analyzed its capability of adhesion with mucin. Samples were analyzed by DLS before and after an incubation period of one hour at 37 degrees with a water solution of mucin. On the left side, you can observe nanoparticle sites. Niosome's diameter is not affected by inter the interaction with mucin, in contrast to chitosomes. In fact, their dimension increases up to 700 nanometers. The same evaluation was done for the charge. Niosomes zeta potential is unchanged. Besides, chitosomes become negatively charged. We can explain these results by evidencing the positively charged chitosan reaction with negatively charged mucin. Positively charged chitosan can increase the drug residence time of the loaded drug in the nasal cavity due to their electrostatic interaction with the neg negatively charged epithelial cells. Uh, then MTS assay was performed in order to test the cytotoxicity of our formulation. When cells were exposed to different concentration of the batches for two hours, no significant changes were observed. 
the membrane integrity and the metabolic activity of the cells were not altered. Uh, then permeability test always on cacao 2 cells were, was performed and it evidenced an increase of 14 fold of clonazepam permeation in the cytosomes formulation compared to clonazepam free solution. Scanning electron microscope and scanning electron micro transmission electron microscope images provided information on morphology and dimensions on the, of the nanoparticles. A dimensional analysis confirmed the LS values. This is another image of chitosomes by cryogenic electron microscope. Samples were previously vitrified, an important procedure essential to avoid structured eyes. Uh, our sample is spread on a holy carbon grid, gently swapped and then vitrified. So in conclusion, in this study, the influence of chitosome coating on niosomes for nasal delivery was investigated. Three different preparation methods have been studied and evaporation method proved to be appropriate and reproducible. The optimized formulation produced chitosomes with suitable characteristics for nose to brain delivery with a good drug loading. The functionalization coating with chitosan was confirmed by the difference in the zeta potential value. Besides the mucoadesic properties of chitosan and its ability to improve the permission of the entrapped molecule were proved by mucoadesion test and permission study across CACO2 cell line. I would like to thank you for having kindly listened to me. I hope I've been clear and I will be answering to your questions. Thank you very much, Julia, for your talk. Um, I have uh, one question. Okay. <laughs> uh, regarding the dimension of the, um, of the nanoparticles, of, the, of your chitosomes. Okay. Do you, uh, is intended to have a specific dimension considering the nasal administration or the, the size is not a problem? Okay, so in literature, we found out that the size is not um, a problem, but we think that if the size, the particle size is lower, it's better because they can go through our epithelial cells better and they can uh, deliver the drug better. We think. And, and regarding uh, chitosan, why chitosan? Other, other polysaccharides can also be used? Or? Uh, yes, but we use chitosan because we think that it, it uh, has got a lot of mucoadhesive uh, properties and it, uh, it is a fundamental uh, characteristic for nasal administration. And so it, it was suitable for this purpose. Okay. And have you already done any experiments to support uh, the potentialities of these uh, nanoparticles for the nasal administration? Uh, uh, for now, we only tested the permeability on CACO2 cell line, only to test, in fact, the permeability if our formulation improved the permeability of clonazepam. Maybe the next step uh, should be uh, an animal test to check if it is actually possible. Thank you, Julia. We have uh, we still have time, and we have another question here. Okay. Chat, and uh, it is uh, what is the model of blood-brain barrier that you think adequate to evaluate the brain deli the deliver on the brain? Okay, so this is a very uh, difficult question because uh, uh, there are a lot of types that we can choose, but I think that in literature. Uh, we can find the best one to fit for our purpose. So I'm not able to answer right now. We have to check in literature uh, which cell line is better. Okay, thank you very much, Julia. We don't have more questions. So uh, I would like to acknowledge your participation. Thank you very much. This is a very interesting study on alternative the drug delivery administration routes. So thank you very much. And I wish you luck for your next uh, steps on this study. Hope that you find a very nice solution. Thank, thank you. you very much. So we still have 
five minutes. We have to wait because we need to be synchronized with the other uh, session. But I think the other, the next speaker uh, 